Hello guys, welcome to our talk show today. Today we are really pleased and honored to have invited a national geography explorer, Corey, right? Yes. To, to be on our show. Hi. Hi. Corey, nice welcome. To welcome Thank to you. China. Thank welcome you. to our talk show. Thank you. Yeah. Could you first introduce yourself a little bit more to our audience? Yes. So I'm Corey Jaskolski. I'm a National Geographic Explorer, one of the few fellows at National Geographic that are out exploring the world and developing new technologies to see the world in a different light. Wow, excellent. You know, we're really, really interested in, um, in your work life. You must have experienced so many wonderful things. Uh, can you please tell us what it's like working as a National Geog Geography Explorer? Working as a National Geographic Explorer, I think, is the, is the best job in the world. We get to go to amazing places all over the world mm -hmm. and to document them in a way that we can bring back these stories to the, to the rest of the world and share them, which is, I think, the most important part, to be able to share that excitement and that enthusiasm for exploration with the rest of the world. I also know you actually had a technical background, yes. right? But, um, but being a National Geography Explorer is a kind of a, <laughs> a switch in your, is, uh, yes. your, your major, in your career. So can you tell us how did you end up getting the job here uh, working at the National Geography? Yes, w when I started in my career I was uh, electrical engineering and computer science uh -huh. so mostly working in artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and but the problem was is my real love was photography and videography and I always thought that those two things photography and video would be a hobby and I would get a job at IBM or maybe Google uh -huh. and not be able to uh, do those things as part of my career but um, while I was in school, I actually got the opportunity to work with James Cameron, the wow, guy the that made yeah, Titanic, Titanic, Avatar, yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah, wow. and got to build uh, battery packs that help explore the Titanic. So mm -hmm. on that project, I actually got to go 12,500 feet, so 3,800 meters deep on the deck of Titanic in a submarine wow. and use our robots to explore and help take images inside of Titanic. Wow. That's when I realized that I can combine these two things, my combine passion for engineering and for the, for for the, the photography. Yep. Oh, great. Excellent, excellent. That's a, also, uh, it's not a movie, because there's a documentary about Titanic. Right. right? Actually, that documentary is actually aired on a platform. And it's oh, very popular. Oh, oh, yes, many, yes. many of our viewers have watched it. Oh, good. So yeah. you are the person behind it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually <laughs> in the documentary too. It's Ghosts of the Abyss. But when if you look for it, I had I had hair down to the middle of my back in college. <laughs> so you have to look for the long hair guy. Oh, I see. <laughs> wow, wow, that's that's great. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit more details about? I, I think it's, it's really 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 deep down in the ocean, right? Yes. To talk to film the uh, Titanic inside the Titanic, and it's the first time in right. the world, right? Uh, any maybe some challenges you were facing? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yes. So the um, filming the Titanic is difficult because at 3,800 meters deep, there's so much pressure that you can't scuba dive. Yeah. We had to go down in a specialized three-man submarine, and there were only, I think, three submarines in the world that could go that deep, and one of them was a Russian submarine. Mm -hmm. So we went out on a Russian research vessel, and we had our robots with our battery packs in them exploring inside Titanic, and one of them actually got stuck inside of Titanic. Oh, that's bad. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we went. We wanted to go down there with another robot and get our robot back mm -hmm. and bring it back up. But the only way to bring it back up would be to hold it to the belly of the three-man submarine that we were in to bring it back to the surface all the way to the top. Wow. But the challenge was these batteries, they were so high power that if anything went wrong, they could explode with the same force of dynamite. Wow. So, um, in order to bring them back, we had to come up with a, a way to go down and catch the other robot with the second robot and bring it out. And as the battery guy, I had to be there to inspect the robot to make sure it was safe to bring back up. Wow, so that's kind of like a, <coughs> like a suicide mission, right. but you had to do it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I felt like... How did uh, you finally pull it off? Right. So in the end, um, we, with one of the robots, we took a coat hanger that you would hang your clothing on and we bent it into a spear. And we actually took that on the on the other robot and we rammed the other one until we actually got the end of the coat hanger stuck in oh. the robot and then we could pull it out that way. And you could see when we did that, I could tell that the battery pack was already destroyed. So it was oh. not going to not going to be a danger to anyone on the submarine. I see, I see. Wow. That's so that's really smart. And you use a very simple tool, the coat right. hanger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and you yeah. solve the, this, this the challenge, this problem. That's the that's the thing about um, engineering and exploration is yeah, yeah. I if we would have had that problem back in my lab, I could have come up with 10 ways to fix it and built tools just to fix it. But when you're in the field and something goes wrong, you have to use what is available to you, which is mm -hmm. sometimes 
just a coat hanger and duct tape <laughs> and you can try to solve the problem. Wow, you have to really think on your feet, right? Yes, yes. And you will use whatever available to you. Exactly. Yep. Wow. Can you tell us, is this uh, does this happen quite often during your, your work, challenges, problem solving? It does, yes. The, yeah. I mean, working in the field is just basically a series of problems and challenges. Mm -hmm. um, we've had many, uh, almost everywhere we work we have problems. Um, I've had uh, mosquitoes in the jungle fly into a electronics equipment that I've had and the electronics stop working and you open it up and you think, what is wrong? And you find a mosquito laying across the circuit board and you're like, oh! So um, we've had drones, automated drones carrying uh -huh. very expensive equipment just take off on their own and we almost lost them in the jungles. Wow. Uh, many problems. Uh, the we often do a lot of filming underwater as well um, in the ocean and have tons of problems there. Uh, one of my one of my favorite stories is we were filming stingrays with a big 360 degree camera. It was 12 cameras on a big circle that I had on my back mounted, uh -huh. and it, the stingrays wouldn't come anywhere near me. I think maybe they thought the uh, camera was weird and they didn't want to come by. So I took some squid and I put it in my hand <laughs> and I thought, well, this will bring the stingrays near, bait. right? Right. <laughs> and so it did, but the problem is, is it worked way too well and all the stingrays started coming in and they could smell it in my hand. So the stingrays would come and they, the first one came in and bit my hand really hard. <laughs> wow. And with the video camera on my back, it was recording audio too. And all you hear on the You're audio yearly. is me go, ah! <laughs> and throw the squid up in the air and the stingrays get it. But yep, engineering in the field is always, you know, nothing works like you think it's going to, so it's always solving problems. And sometimes you even sacrifice certain part of your right, body right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. for, for the pleasure of the viewers. That's right, that's right. It's all about bringing back the story. <laughs> wow, wow. Wow. So, um, can you tell us, uh, there must be many proud moments in your, your career, in your life. Which one do you think may be the, the proudest moment? Oh, yeah. Um, from, from work, you know, the work perspective, I think the proudest moments are yeah. always when I see people enjoying the work that we did. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're out there uh, doing the work, you're, you're not sleeping, you're, you're solving problems, and sometimes you're wondering, why do I do this? Uh -huh. But when you, uh, your work gets shown in a museum exhibit and you see people wearing virtual reality headsets looking wow. at your work and you see you know, children and their parents all doing it together, I think that's always the most proud for me is being able to see people enjoy it. Okay, the pleasure from the viewers, from yes. the people. Oh, good. And you just also you mentioned about virtual reality. Yes. And so I, I know you, you go to certain places, explore certain stuff, and show them to to the audience. But you don't, you really reserve, reserve the whole area. Right. You don't you don't take them away. That's you right. You still That's put right. it back to where the, it, it was. Right? That's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, unlike uh, um, unlike a lot of archaeology that's done where they take all the artifacts away and put it in a museum, mm -hmm. we don't ever take anything. We just 3D scan the entire place, mm -hmm. all the artifacts in it, usually without touching anything at all. And then we can build up a whole virtual copy of that place in virtual reality so we can mm -hmm. show people without disturbing anything. And, you know, the reason this is important is yeah. because um, we, we think we're very, you know, archaeology is pretty advanced right now. but. I always think that a hundred years from now, archaeology will be more advanced. Uh, you yeah. know, if you think back when King Tut's tomb was discovered in Egypt a hundred years ago, yeah. they, they did a lot of damage to it doing mm. what was the best archaeology of the time. They did their yeah. best practices, but now a hundred years later, we look and we say, oh, I wish they never would have touched any of that. They did so bad, they yeah. didn't preserve it. So I think a hundred years from now, people will look back at us and say, we're really glad they left everything there and didn't disturb it because they'll have better techniques then. Yes, yes. Well, I really respect that. It's really good for the future. And people with more technology, higher, higher technology to do more things, useful things about it. Yes, yes. Wow. There, there's, a saying, there's a saying um, yeah. in the United States uh, about hiking and uh, backpacking you know, through the woods. Oh. And it what says, it says uh, take only photographs and leave only footprints. And I, I think I, I like yeah, that yeah, for like archaeology that, yeah. as take well. Take only photographs. Uh, graphs and leave only footprints. Yep. Oh, wow, excellent, excellent. So can you tell us about your next mission, where you're gonna go to explore next? You bet, yes, yes. Um, we actually are exploring all over the world. We, um, in order to do more of the work, like the uh, 3D scanning that we've been doing for museums, we actually mm -hmm. started up a whole new company called Virtual Wonders. And virtual Wonders, okay, yep. guys, check it out. Virtualwonders.com. Sure. <laughs> yep. okay. And uh, so what we're doing there is we're 3D scanning many of the cultural places around the world. We're mm -hmm. going to be scanning, um, we hope to scan Machu Picchu, Petra, the Nabataean ruins in Jordan. Mm -hmm. We're doing the Anasazi Indian sites in the United States. And actually, this summer, we're going back to Titanic on another submarine to 3D scan all of Titanic. 
Oh, will James Cameron be there? No, he won't on this one. I don't think so. No, no. This is not a private submarine that another partner of ours is building. So. Um, and I'm and sure this time the documentary will be even advanced. Even yes, better yes, than yes, the yeah. previous one. Yep, right? I hope Since so. Since we enjoyed right. the previous one, we'll definitely enjoy more. Oh, good. Well, thank enjoy you. the yep. next one. And we hope, uh, you know, it's some, uh, someday we hope to work in China as well, that you have so many beautiful cultural yes, sites uh, here in, in China indeed, yeah. that to 3D scan and share with the rest of the world as well. Yeah, yeah. Any places particularly you have in mind you want to ex explore in China? Oh, many of them. I mean, uh, many, you know, most people haven't, uh, outside of China, a lot of them haven't seen many of the sites. They haven't seen, many people haven't seen the Great Wall. Many people mm -hmm. have never seen some of the tombs of the emperors and some yeah, of the other yeah. things that are here that I think are, would be would be amazing so yes yeah. and can you also tell us where do you offer and how do you you know choose your destinations where to explore yes what, what, what's the process like so um, our process starts uh, mostly with uh, we, we made a big list of all the places that us and all of our friends thought that would be amazing to see mm -hmm. and then we just think about you know what w a lot of the places that we try to uh, do work on are places that are in danger from something whether it's whether it's from um, you know the uh, climate change destroying mm -hmm. some of the places mm -hmm. or whether it's because of conflict like there's a lot of places in in Egypt and Iraq and yeah, things yeah. like that that are being destroyed so we try to pick places like that but otherwise it's mostly picking places that we think that uh, the world hasn't seen yet and mm -hmm. would, would enjoy and it will help you know change them inside by seeing these beautiful places well thank you thank you so much for You're taking welcome. the thank interview it's really inspiring and we learned much from you we wish you all the best looking forward to seeing more wonderful work from you thank you very much Okay, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.